uh, more so what the purpose is of the comprehensive plan, uh, because as of today, uh, we will be making it public for 28 days for viewing so that at the February school board meeting, uh, we'll have an opportunity for questions from the school board uh, so that we can uh, have the uh, comprehensive plan approved at the March meeting. So with me this evening uh, are several members of the committee. Uh, we have Dr. Hughes, who's our director of <coughs> curriculum. Uh, Mr. Chris Newland, who is a teacher uh, at, at our high school. Uh, Mrs. Sarah Malaskis, who's not only a, uh, a teacher at Southern Elementary, but also a parent. Uh, Mr. Uh, Joe Wilson, not only a school board member, but a parent. And Mrs. Samantha Hall, uh, the same as a school board member and a parent. So thank you all for being with us. Uh, we did have one community member. Unfortunately, Mr. Dave Bowers uh, had another commitment, uh, could not be with us this evening to present this overview. So as we take a look at the uh, purpose, the comprehensive plan is something that is done by each of our school district every three years. And the purpose of that is that we can continue to focus on our students, the achievement, and the progress that they're making. And this comprehensive plan, once is approved in March, will, be, will start in 2024, 2025 school year, and go through the 20. 627 school year. As I mentioned, I have a few members with me that will speak briefly. Uh, more specifically, we had 46 total members that were a part of this committee. Not only did it include uh, parents, staff members, administrators, but school boards and community members. It's very important when you're doing a comprehensive plan that we make sure that we have a full view of all stakeholders and feedback within there. So at this point, I'm going to turn over to District Vision. Is it yeah. Oh. This is Samantha Hall. Okay. So the vision and mission statements are crucial for all nonprofits to thrive, including connecting all stakeholders to its purpose and serving as the basis for leadership decisions. And this applies for schools as well. According to the definition in Marzano's book on high reliability schools, a mission is a statement as to why the district system of education exists, the fundamental purpose for its schools, and how to accomplish that purpose. A vision describes what the district system of education should become to better fulfill our fundamental purpose. As a school board, these statements serve as pillars to guide decision making, policy development, resource allocation, and other aspects of school operations. As a school board member, we have the responsibility to familiarize ourselves with the work of the school system and bring to the professional direction of the schools the viewpoint, knowledge, and wisdom of the community as an elected representative. Recognizing the importance of these two pillars for our school district, Mr. Wilson will now share what those vision statements are. Good evening. So back to the vision thank you all right so our district's vision it was last updated in 2001 um, southern york county school district vision is that we is that of a dynamic organization that will work in partnership with the family and community and will continuously strive to develop productive contributing responsible citizens capable of meeting the global challenges of the future okay and our vision this is our action. This is kind of how we do things, how we achieve those goals. Southern York County School District, through a cooperative effort with the family and community, will provide a quality learning environment that promotes character, fosters responsibility, and challenges students to achieve their full potential. So next, we've looked at the goal of the committee. So we wanted to have a group of people that will help us to look at what's going really well in our district and what are areas that we continue to work on the move forward. So as a committee, we sat down in table groups and we looked at each building and brainstormed the positives that are going on and areas that we wanted to continue to work with. And then in those groups, we started to look and identified goals and action steps. Good evening, everybody. 
I have the planning and preparation phase. The info mainly was derived from the previous district comprehensive plan. What happened then was the district updated with new members of the steering committee, which as Dr. Reppert said, there were 46 of us. And we met on several occasions, went over components of the comprehensive plan, and you'd see all of the things that we did go over, the profile and plan essentials, steering committee, which is the 46 people, the local education agency profile, which is the district, mission and vision, as the two school board directors talked about, and our educational values. Thank you. So the Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee, um, we completed a needs assessment to identify strengths as well as challenges that we would address in the proposed comprehensive plan. That involved um, collaborating to analyze a variety of district assessment data that would include our state assessment data like the PSSAs, the Keystone exams, um, as well as other district data that you could find on the PA Future Ready Index, um, like attendance information, student demographics for the district. We also looked at our local assessment data. That would be like our in-house district assessments that we use to measure skills that aren't necessarily assessed by the state exams. Um, we use that information to identify the best instructional strategies that we can use to meet the needs of all our students and help them grow. So these um, challenges and strengths are summarized in the proposed comprehensive plan. So as we develop the plan, we have looked at really analyzing those strengths and challenges like we talked about. We went through and we did goal setting. We're in each one of our groups, we went through and we created goals that then had action plans and we had to come up with professional development and our communication steps for each one of them. So as you will see in the plan, it is divided out into these areas to be able to show what we as a district would like to continue the work on and move forward with. In addition to the comprehensive plan itself, we are required by the state of Pennsylvania to include other required reports. Those are academic standards and assessment requirements. We have to go through and go through a comprehensive list of making sure that our curriculum is all up to date and that we have all of the pieces required by Pennsylvania. In addition, we have to have an induction plan, which we completed and had board approved several months ago. We have to have a professional development plan, student services assurances, and a gifted education plan assurances, ensuring that we have all of the components necessary from Pennsylvania Department of Education for our gifted programs. So this evening, we just wanted to give you a brief overview of the purpose behind the comprehensive plan. As I did mention, uh, that the comprehensive plan will become public this evening. Uh, for the next 28 days. I would encourage the public as well as the school board uh, to review that and when we uh, get back together, I believe it's May 15th for our next school board meeting uh, that we will enter 16th? My March. Okay, no, but at our, but our sorry, at our uh, February meeting mm -hmm. that we would get together, uh, answer any questions so that for the March board meeting uh, we would have this approved and send that off to PDE for our, our final approval and then signature by uh, President Ankle. Any questions from the school board? Thank you very much. All right. Um, all right. Um, so um, 